everyone in this room, if not in the country, can make a huge change in in terms of the narrative for future generations. How can you develop policy that is going to affect Aboriginal people without lived experience and Aboriginal people influencing that policy? It's crazy. It just don't, it's like me trying to develop policy for women when I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm male. You know, I, I don't know, you know, the, the, that's women's business and you've got men's business. So um, I've got a shirt on. It's the Uluru Statement from the Heart. We're going to a referendum either next year or the year after and we need, we need your support. We need non-Aboriginal Australia. You give my mother, you give my mother, my mother citizenship rights in '67. I was ten months old in this country when my mother had a right to vote. Now it's time to give my kids a voice, and we can do that. And I know there's people out there that say, "Oh, why give them special treatment?" Well, it's not special treatment. Policies in this country removed our kids. The trauma that was, that was spoken about is intergenerational, transgenerational. But with this process, I think uh, we, we, can, we can start to heal the nation. And we've got to do this together because uh, there are people that are coming through in this country. It's your kids are the ones who are mixing with our kids. And they don't see black and white. They don't see racism. They just see their mates. They just see their friends. You know, and it's a narrative, it's a story that we can be part of. And uh, so uh, that's why I'm a staunch advocate for, for trying to bring about change in, ter in terms of letting our people have influence over, a voice over what our future, our, what, what's going to impact on future generations.